Number 11 then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1 3 mark question, complete the square. Now, it's a simple little question. You could almost, well you could, you could just do that all in your head and put down the answer. But there are basically two techniques. There's the arithmetical technique and the algebraic technique. When it comes to the arithmetical technique, which is probably the one you're going to use because it's a lot faster, then there's several different ways of setting it out. So everybody has their own favourite, really. You could even just go straight to the answer because you can do that in your head. In which case you have to prove it, though, by expanding it out afterwards. Well, but it all stems from the simple fact that if you've got a square, and I'll just keep it in the simple case, a little linear term just with the coefficient of x being 1, then the square of that is made by squaring the first, squaring the last, and in the middle will be twice the product. Which means if you're starting with this, you can form the square really just by looking at this middle term. That's the crucial one. That may not fit. But this is the crucial one because that should be double what goes inside the bracket. And that's the only thing you've got to think of. That's double what you put in the bracket. And whatever you put in the bracket, the part at the end should be the square of that number. So one technique would be this. Just put the expression down again. Well, first of all, I want it to be a simple x, so take that 2 out of it. Again, there's two techniques. You could take 2 out of everything. And there would be cases somewhere where that would be appropriate because you want this factor of 2 to disappear somewhere else. But not here, because you can see it says put it into this form, where r is separate, that constant at the end. So it's only this part I'm going to work with. I'm going to ignore the 23. So taking 2 out. It happens to be a common factor here. If it wasn't a common factor, you still have to take that out as a factor, whether that liked it or not. But that does like it. That knocks that down to a 6. Now, I'm leaving the 23 out of it. I've left a space here. That's just the technique I'm going to use. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a square, and then I'm going to show up here what I had to put in. So I immediately know what the square is, because that's double the number. That shouldn't have been a square there. Then I also know that if that's half of that number, that should be the square of it there. So I take that up and I'll put a 9 in there. That's what I needed. I didn't have that 9. So I've got to put in a 9 here to form this. But there's really two 9s. So I've put in an 18. So I'll have to take away the 18. 23 minus 18, that makes plus 5. And doing it that way, the marks would be identifying that factor, taking that 2 out from these first two terms, would be 1 mark. Getting the 3, and then finishing off the constant for the third mark. Now the other way just involves how do you handle this extra term, this 9 that was necessary to complete the square. So I'll start off the same way as before. And say, right, well, I'll take that 2 out, because I just want to deal with x. So that will be x squared plus, take the 2 out, whether that 12 likes it or not, so that becomes halved as well to 6x, but this time I won't leave a space. So that's just the same as this just now. Then I'll say, right, if I've got these two terms, I can immediately form a square. So that must be 2 times x plus 3 squared. Except, you know that if you've got a square, there's an extra term that's implicit there. So this is no longer the same as that because this didn't have that 9. So this time, instead of putting the 9 in in advance to make the square, I've made the square, but I've made too much, so I have to take off the 3 squared. In which case, I'll have to put a bracket around here. You can use whatever shape of bracket you like. Just have to use a square there. It's just an aesthetic, just to show the fact that they're both getting multiplied by 2. I think I'm already writing more than I wrote before. So now I've got, I've got 2 times the x plus 3 squared. I've got minus 2 times this, so that's 2 9s which are 18 plus the 23. So now I finish it off with 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 5 as before. Marks were the same way. You've got one mark for taking out the factor of 2, you've got one mark for forming the x plus 3, and the last mark was just for all the jiggery pokery to get that 5. Now this was simple because those were very easy numbers, especially since they had a common factor. But you could have one where you've got negatives here and you've got fractions involved and you're squaring fractions. 
In a case like that, you'd have to use this technique. Whereas with this simple case, you could just do that in your head just by thinking of the pattern, which is what you would do later on. You wouldn't set it out as much as that. You'd say, right, I've got 2x squared plus 12x plus 23. You think, right, I don't want that 2. If I take that 2 out, that becomes a 6. That's double what it should be, so that should be a 3 squared. But that should have a 3 squared in it, which is a 9, and I've put 2 of them in, that's 18. I'll have to take that 18 off of this, and that leaves me with a 5. So you could just do it all in your head. And if you did do that, you would get two of the marks. You'd get the mark for the 2, and you'd get the mark for the 3. But according to the marking scheme, if you were just to do this in your head, you'd have to demonstrate how you got that 5 by multiplying it out to show that it was in fact correct. So you'd have to, so there's probably more work if you do it this way. In this particular case, because it's an exam question, you'd have to multiply that out. x squared plus 6x plus 9. Square the first square, the last twice the product. Plus the 5. 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. Plus 5, 2x squared, plus 12x, plus 23. And then you get the last mark when you've shown it actually works. Now the algebraic technique, which doesn't involve all the arithmetical gymnastics, involves just expanding this and equating it to this term by term. So if you were to expand the required form of the expression, you would have p times x squared plus 2qx plus q squared, square the first square, the last twice the product, plus the r. So that's px squared plus 2pqx, since p is multiplying all of them, plus pq squared plus r. Now that's to be the same as this. That's to be the same as 2x squared plus 12x plus 23. I'll just identify the parts maybe by putting these in brackets just to make them stand out. So equating the different parts. If you take the x squared terms, the number in front of x squared should be the same as the number in front of x squared. So immediately you've got p equals 2. There's a mark. Not until you put it into the final answer though. The x terms, well the 2pq, well I know what p is, that's a 2. So 2 times 2 times q should be the same as 12. Well, that's 4q is 12, so that means that q must be 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now the constant term. So this big bundle here. p, I know that's 2. q, I know that's 3. Squared plus r should be the constant term 23. So that's 9, 18. So that means that r must be the 23 minus the 18, so r must be 5. But the last mark doesn't come as soon as you get the 5. You have to rewrite it also, not put it in yet, which means that the final answer is going to be 2 times x plus q, so that's x plus 3 squared, plus r, so plus 5. Now you get the mark. Now that's the algebraically rigorous method, but it's much longer than doing it the arithmetical way.